Now, there's a company called Universum that does a survey every year of students and asks them what, who would be their ideal employers. So I went online and found the top 15 choices this year for Sweden. Um, Google's number five on your list in Sweden. Now these were also business students, I must say, not, uh, not just uh, general students uh, who are majoring in other subjects. But it's an interesting mix. There are some banks there, some consumer product companies, accounting firms, um, I guess a few government or public entities. Now if you look in contrast at the US, again, you see Google is first. Um, this is undergraduates graduating from college. But you see an awful lot of nonprofit and government agencies on here, like the Peace Corps and Teach for America. And again, I think this reflects their desire to do something meaningful. And finally, if you look at MBAs in America, it's a very different list from the undergraduate list. Google is still number one, but it's mostly banks and consulting firms that are the high paying employers. Now, right now, we have four generations in the workplace. And this chart sum, sums up the birth years, how many there are in America uh, in each generation, some of the traits and key historical events that uh, define these generations. And because of the differences in their traits, which I'm going to go through one at a time here, I, I've already dealt with the millennial traits, um, there are conflicts between the generations. Generation X, as I said, tended to be a bit more cynical, um, more reliant on themselves. In America, they were called latchkey children, which meant they were the first generation in America to go home to empty houses after school because both parents were working. Um, so they tended to be more uh, able to rely on themselves for things. Baby boomers, workaholics, defined by their jobs, more loyal than millennials, um, although I don't know that anybody's very loyal to their employers these days. Um, and then the traditionalists, the, there aren't as many of them left in the workplace, but they're probably the dream employers of most companies, in, dream employees in that they, they are loyal, <clears throat> more respectful of authority, have a pretty strong work ethic. So if you don't believe there's a generational conflict, then read these first two comments. The first comment came in an email when my article ran in the Wall Street Journal, and the second one was posted on the law blog of the Wall Street Journal's website. Um, those are obviously extremes, but there really is a lot of disagreement about, uh, about how to do your work in, among the generations. And the points of contention are some of the things I talked about. The millennial's entitlement, um, a feeling by older generations that they don't have a strong work ethic. On the other hand, they believe they do have a strong work ethic, they just work differently. Um, they need a lot of feedback, which older generations find annoying. Older generations want face time in the office, which is anathema to this generation. Uh, the casual manner is often a source of conflict and their communication styles. I think the ultimate irony is that a lot of the managers who are complaining are the ones who raised these kids to be the way they are, and, uh, and yet they don't know how to manage them in the workplace. Maybe they don't know how to manage them at home either. Um, so some companies are trying to create more harmony. They're having seminars where they get the generations together to talk and try to understand each other better and appreciate their differences. I think some companies like IBM are stressing mentoring more. And they're also doing something called reverse mentoring, meaning that they use young people to teach older generations technology skills, uh, which I think is actually a very good thing. Um, so basically, I concluded about this generation when I finished my book that why I found it so fascinating was because it is a complex generation that has seemingly conflicting traits, that they tend to be high achievers, but they aren't the best when it comes to leadership and independent thinking. They want all this freedom and flexibility to work on their own terms, but they still need a lot of feedback and direction. And some of them dream of being famous and having a lot of money, but they still want to give back to society. So it's an interesting mix. Um, 
As far as managing them, I think like everything in life, it's a balancing act. It's going to take give and take from both sides. Um, I think companies need to try to make them feel involved and important when they can, um, even if it is a rather boring, mundane task to try to explain why this job is important in the bigger picture of things. Um, give more feedback, but within reason. Um, try to help wean them from checklists to be more independent thinkers. And I think uh, employers have to show some respect for parents, but certainly keep firm boundaries and not let them get involved in job interviews or performance reviews. Finally, I'm going to close with uh, some of my thoughts on how this economy we're in is, re is going to affect this generation. Um, there's clearly no question that it's a huge wake-up call. Um, I've interviewed some young people since my book came out, and they are really upset and depressed because they can't find jobs. Uh, more of them are having to go back home and live. I think there's some fear, insecurity, because one or both of their parents could lose their jobs. Um, there obviously is less job hopping and fewer entrepreneurial opportunities right now. I think somewhat there might be more opportunity, especially in government jobs in America. Um, I guess the most positive outcome for this, from this recession for this generation would be, I think, if it makes them more resilient, more flexible, makes their expectations a bit more realistic. But I think in the end, once we do emerge from this recession, the job market improves that the millennials' basic values will still be intact. They still will want work-life balance. They still will want to work in a place that has diversity among their employees. And they still will want meaningful work. And probably they'll want to do something that means they're giving back to society in some way. So I don't know, do we have time for a few questions? Yeah. Are, are we at